Hey folks, after doing an enormous amount of research and scouring through thousands of guest reviews from popular sites such as TripAdvisor, Google Reviews, Reddit, Booking.com, Expedia, Yelp, and more, we've assembled for you a list of the 10 best hotels in downtown Las Vegas, with prices included. So whether you're looking for a budget-friendly stay or a luxurious experience, these are the 10 hotels that have been rated highest overall by real guests, regardless of price category. Also, before you come at us for clickbaiting, let's just say that because of the amount of content and length of the videos, we'll be splitting them into two parts, with the first five being featured in this video and part two to follow later. Now, enough talk. Let's get started. First on the list at number 10 is the Fremont Hotel and Casino. The Fremont Hotel and Casino in downtown Las Vegas offers a blend of classic charm and modern amenities, making it a popular choice for the budget conscious. Located right on Fremont Street, the hotel places you at the heart of the vibrant Fremont Street experience, with easy access to a number of attractions, live music, and the famous Viva Vision light show. And the recent $50 million renovation has significantly improved the property with modernized rooms and an expanded casino floor. The addition of the FanDuel Sportsbook is another major highlight, offering a state-of-the-art sports betting experience with a large video wall, comfortable seating, and numerous betting kiosks. Dining options at the Fremont are varied and generally well-received. Tony Robes is a favorite, known for its affordable steak and lobster special. Lanai Express is another popular spot, especially for its famous oxtail soup. The Rocky Mountain Chocolate Factory satisfies those with a sweet tooth, and Dunkin' Donuts provides a convenient option for breakfast and coffee. The new food hall, also part of the recent renovations, offers a variety of quick service options, adding to the hotel's appeal. For those of you wondering about the noise from Fremont Street, it can be an issue, especially for rooms facing the street. So it's recommended that you request a room on a higher floor or one facing away from the street to minimize noise. Also, the smell of smoke in the casino area may be an issue for those of you that are non-smokers. And while the recent renovations have modernized many aspects of the hotel, you may still find certain areas a bit dated. Parking is another mixed bag. The hotel does offer free valet parking, however, the lack of on-site self-parking can be inconvenient, especially during busy times when finding a spot can be challenging. In terms of amenities, most are generally satisfied with the basics provided, such as Wi-Fi, in-room safes, and refrigerators. However, just know that the hotel doesn't provide in-room coffee makers, and it also lacks an on-site pool. For the months of July and August, Weekday and Sunday nightly rates at the Fremont average right at $55, while Friday and Saturday rates for the two months average between $129 to $148. Weekday and Sunday rates for the months of September through December range between $45 to $80, with Friday and Saturday rates for those months averaging between $129 to $180. But remember folks, these are the average rates for these months as discounts are always popping up for this and all the hotels on this list. Also, rates can be higher, depending on what big events are going on in the city. And one more thing. Yes, the hotel does charge a resort fee. It's 34 buckaroos per night. Coming up next at number 9 is The D, Las Vegas. The D is another, depending on who you're asking, budget-friendly option that puts you smack dab in the middle of all the downtown action. It's perfect if you love being surrounded by the energy of the city, but fair warning, it can also get pretty noisy, especially if your room faces the street. So we'd recommend asking for a room on a higher floor to minimize the noise. The hotel itself has a pretty interesting vibe. It's not as massive or flashy as some of the strip hotels, but it's got its own charm. The casino floor is lively, with upbeat music and dancing dealers that really add to the fun atmosphere. One unique feature is the Sigma Derby machine on the second floor. It's a vintage horse racing game that you don't see in many other casinos these days. Now let's talk about the rooms. They're comfortable, but pretty basic. The beds are nice. They use Serta mattresses and each room has a 32-inch HD TV. However, don't expect a lot of extras. 
Standard rooms don't come with mini fridges or microwaves, which is definitely a bit inconvenient. But if you need these amenities, you can upgrade to a corner king room or a suite. One thing to note is that the hotel has gone through some renovations recently, but some areas still feel dated. It may not be a deal breaker for you, but it's something to keep in mind if you're expecting everything to be brand new. The D offers a few dining options that are worth mentioning. Andiamo Italian Steakhouse is great if you're looking for a nicer meal, while American Coney Island is perfect for a quick bite. There's also a McDonald's if you're craving something familiar. As for bars, the Long Bar in the Casino and the D-Bar on Fremont Street are both fun spots to grab a drink and people watch. One of the perks of staying at the D is the free parking for hotel guests, which is a big plus if you're driving. They also have a fitness center, and yes, they do have a pool. An interesting bonus is that guests get access to Circus Stadium Swim and Legacy Club, which are pretty swanky facilities at the nearby Circa Resort. Now let's talk about price. For the months of July and August, weekday rates average between $29 to $39 per night. Sundays average $35 per night. And Fridays and Saturdays average between $119 to $159 per night. From September through December, Sunday rates average between $79 to $139 per night. Weekday rates average between $29 to $109, with Thursdays being the only day hovering around that higher $109 daily rate. And Fridays and Saturdays during September through December average between $149 to $259 per night. Just know, however, that yes, there's also a $34 per night resort fee here. The hotel does run a rewards program called Club One, which might be worth joining if you plan to gamble or visit often. They also often have promotions running, so we definitely recommend checking their website before you book. In the end, the D is a solid choice if you're looking for a fun, budget-friendly stay in downtown Las Vegas. It's not the fanciest hotel in town, but it offers good value for money, especially if you're strategic about when you book. At number 8 is the El Cortez Hotel and Casino. The El Cortez is a real piece of history, being the longest continuously running hotel casino in Las Vegas since 1941. You'll find it right in the heart of downtown, just a stone's throw from Fremont Street. Now first, let's talk rooms. They've got a few options for you. There's the original 47 or pavilion rooms if you're into that vintage vibe, but heads up, some folks find these a bit dated. If you're after something more modern, check out the Tower Premium Rooms or the Cabana Suites. These have recently been spruced up and people seem to love them. The Tower Premium Rooms are especially comfy, while the Cabana Suites across the street offer a cool, boutique-style experience with a 1950s Miami feel. Food-wise, you're covered. There's a Seagulls 1941 for a mix of classic and modern dishes, Pizza Lotto for a slice, and a couple of bars, the Parlor Bar and Ike's Lounge. Oh, and if you're over 50, they got a sweet deal on Wednesdays where you get 50% off at Seagulls 1941. They've also just added a Starbucks for your coffee fix. The casino's got plenty to keep you entertained with over 1,000 slot machines and all your favorite table games. People say that the slots are pretty loose, so that's a bonus. Now here's the exciting part. They're in the middle of a massive $20 million renovation. They're adding 10,000 square feet to the casino and renovating another 4,000 square feet. They're putting in a new high limit slot room, two new bars, including a roulette themed one replacing Ike's, and a new Asian restaurant called Hot Nudes by Chinglish coming in early 2025. Don't worry though, the hotel's staying open during all this work. They also offer free parking in an attached garage. Just keep in mind that some guests have mentioned it can get a bit full at times. So what do so many people love about the place? The historic charm, budget-friendly prices, super-friendly staff, and a location near Fremont Street are big hits. But just like the other hotels, it can get noisy if you're facing the street and there's no pool or spa if that's a deal-breaker for you. If you're booking a room, we recommend going for the Tower Premium Rooms or Cabana Suites for the best experience. If you're a light sleeper, ask for a room with a mountain view to avoid the street noise. For the months of July and August, Sundays and weekday rates average $38 to $45 per night. 
while Fridays and Saturdays average $84 to $112 a night. From September through December, weekday rates range between $43 to $70, Sundays between $52 to $109, and Fridays and Saturdays $127 to $279, with the weekends in the latter part of September and the entire month of October being the most expensive. Also, we hate to be the bearer of bad news, but you're going to have to tack on an extra $29 per night for resort fees. For deals, however, you can save up to 20% by booking directly through their website. Plus, there's a bunch of other perks, like free slot play, dining certificates, and special giveaways. Oh, and don't forget to sign up for their Club Cortez membership for even more goodies like free plays on slot machines and monthly cash drawings. At number 7 is the California Hotel and Casino. Picture this, you step into the lobby and suddenly you're hit with a wave of aloha spirit that's so strong, you'll swear you can smell plumeria and hear ukuleles strumming in the distance. The cow, as it's affectionately known as, is like that quirky ant who moved to Hawaii and came back with a new outlook on life. It's got character, charm, and a whole lot of island flair. The rooms, well, they're not going to knock your socks off with luxury, but hey, they're comfortable and have all the basics you need. Plus, there's a mini fridge in every room, perfect for stashing your leftover loco mocos from the Market Street Cafe. Speaking of food, the cows got options. From the 24-7 comfort of Market Street Cafe, try the oxtail soup, it's a favorite for a reason, to the upscale vibes of Redwood Steakhouse, you won't go hungry. And Aloha Specialties is like a little slice of Hawaii right in the heart of the desert. Now let's talk about the casino. It's not the biggest or the flashiest in Vegas, but it's got heart. With over a thousand slot machines and 21 table games, you'll find plenty of ways to test your luck. Just don't expect the slots to be too generous. They're known for being a bit tight-fisted with the payouts. And if you're thinking about staying at the cow between July and August, Room rates average around $63 per night during the weekdays, with weekends ranging between $135 to $175. And from September through December, rates average between $50 to $80 on weekdays and $115 to $185 on weekends. If you're military, AAA, or a senior, the Cal gives you an extra 10% off. Just remember, the Cal also comes with a $34 per night resort fee. Now, is the cow perfect? By no means. But if you're looking for a laid-back vibe, a taste of Hawaii, and a place where your wallet won't cry itself to sleep every night, the cow might just be right up your alley. And coming in at number 6 and rounding out the first 5 of our 10 best downtown hotels is the Four Queens Hotel and Casino. The Four Queens has been a fixture of Sin City's vibrant scene since 1966 and is situated right across from Binion's Gambling Hall. The hotel features two towers, the North Tower and the South Tower. The North Tower, however, is currently undergoing renovations with plans to reopen in 2025, promising larger bathrooms, new furnishings, in-room refrigerators, coffee makers and enhanced soundproofing. Meanwhile, guests stay in the South Tower, which offers premium rooms that, while not the largest, do come with two items that you'll certainly appreciate, mini fridges and coffee makers. And although many guests have noted the rooms can feel a bit small compared to newer hotels, they generally appreciate the comfort and convenience. Dining options at the Four Queens include a variety of choices. Hugo's Cellar is well regarded for its romantic atmosphere and gourmet dishes, as well as beef wellington and char-broiled steaks served in an intimate setting with brick-lined walls and plush booths. Magnolia's Veranda, overlooking the casino floor, offers a wide array of American dishes. Chicago Brewing Company provides a cozy spot for enjoying award-winning microbrews and Chicago-style pizza, complete with large-screen TVs for sports fans. Well, the patio bar offers a good view of Fremont Street, making it ideal for being nosy. We mean people watching while enjoying your drinks and snacks. The casino also includes over 800 slot and video poker machines, as well as table games like craps, blackjack and roulette. The William Hall Sportsbook caters to those of you that love sports betting with large screen TVs. Entertainment options include the Mike Hammer Comedy Magic Show 
and Hypnosis Unleashed by Kevin Lapini, both offering a mix of comedy and magic that tends to be popular with guests. Parking is available at the Four Queens for a fee of $5 per day for hotel guests, which can be waived with an all-access Players Club card. Valet parking is also offered with validation. A few of the most appreciated highlights for guests are the hotel's central location on Fremont Street, affordable room rates, and the absence of those pesky resort fees. Dining, especially at Hugo's Cellar, receives high marks for quality and service. However, some guests have pointed out that the casino's area's smoky environment can be a nuisance for non-smokers, and the noise from Fremont Street can be disruptive for rooms facing the street. To remedy that, even numbered rooms in the South Tower are recommended for a quieter stay. These rooms typically face south or east, away from the main noise sources. Higher floors in the tower are also likely to experience less street noise than lower floors. Some guests have reported that rooms on the top floors or corner rooms of the tower offer the best noise reduction. However, it's important to note that some level of noise may still be present due to the hotel's location in the heart of downtown Las Vegas. Now let's get to the money. Sundays and weekday rates for the months of July and August are all a flat rate of $83 per night, while Friday and Saturday rates range between $165 to $191. And for the months of September through December, you'll be looking at average rates ranging from $101 to $152 for weekdays and Sundays, and $204 to $294 for Fridays and Saturdays. All right, folks, that does it for part one of our list of the top 10 hotels in downtown Las Vegas. Thanks for watching, and we hope you return for part two, which will be coming real soon.